how early can you take a home pregnancy test? Hi friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. And today I am talking about a hot topic in my world. How early can you take a home pregnancy test? And what do you need to know when you're taking a test and you're trying to get pregnant? I have been there before. If you have followed along this channel, you know that we had infertility. I had three miscarriages and then an ectopic before I got pregnant with my kids. So I am well versed in personally taking pregnancy tests. And I talk to my patients every single day about when they should test, when they should do a home test and when they should not. So I'm going to break down all of the basics for you. First though, if you like this channel, I really would love for you to subscribe. Subscribing allows us to grow our community, answer questions in the community tab, and have input in future videos. So please click that subscribe button now. All right, well, if we're gonna talk about a pregnancy test, we have to first talk about what is happening when you are getting pregnant and some of our pregnancy nomenclature. One of the most confusing things for people is the weeks of pregnancy and when you can detect. And I think we have to talk about the fact that pregnancy way back when we had no idea when ovulation was or when you could detect a pregnancy. So they count it backwards from when you had a baby into your last period. And so all pregnancies are dated based on your LMP or your last menstrual period. What that means is day one of your last period starts the countdown in weeks of your pregnancy. So by the time you ovulate, which for most people, big disclaimer, if you have irregular periods, this may not be you, but for most people, you ovulate about two weeks into your cycle. So by the time you ovulate, you're two weeks pregnant. Implantation typically occurs about five to nine days after implantation. And so you're three or more weeks pregnant and you're just implanting. And typically when you are missing a period, that's about four weeks pregnant. And at that stage, the embryo is still just a ball of cells growing in. Nothing that would resemble a fetus has even happened yet. So it's very interesting and it's always confusing, especially when we're doing IVF because I'm putting an embryo inside. And the moment I put that embryo inside, somebody is two weeks and five days pregnant. So we have to understand that the weeks in pregnancy does not really correlate to what is happening inside the body. Now, what is happening inside the body? When you ovulate, an egg is released from that follicle and an egg goes into the fallopian tube. Sperm has to swim to the fallopian tube where it fertilizes the egg. Sperm and egg meet in the fallopian tube and then early embryo development for the first five days all happen in the fallopian tube until that embryo reaches inside the uterus. When that embryo reaches inside the uterus around day five to six, it can then start to implant into the uterine wall. That's when those outer cells of the embryo, the trophectoderm, can actually start eating away. They release proteases and other enzymes. This can cause implantation, cramps, and bleeding that eat away of the uterine wall and allow a blood vessel connection. And that connection is what allows us to become pregnant and then detect HCG. So once this happens, the embryo has a connection to the maternal blood supply. It can just start to release something called HCG. HCG is human chorionic gonadotropin. Now HCG is also known as the pregnancy hormone and it is what we can detect with our pregnancy tests. So HCG and HCG levels are really important. Now on a period level, what is happening is remember after you ovulate, your body has a follicle that ruptures to allow the egg out. It then heals back up together and makes the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum secretes progesterone from pulses from the brain. So the brain sends out LH pulses that stimulates that corpus luteum to make progesterone and that progesterone is preparing the uterus for implantation. So it's very fascinating, but you can only get pregnant after you've had a certain amount of progesterone. Too little, not good. Too much, not good. So that corpus luteum functioning is really important. Now, if you're not pregnant, the corpus luteum dies after two weeks. It just cannot function anymore. The brain will not support it. However, if you get pregnant and you start to have that HCG secreted, now that rescues the corpus luteum. And what that means for us is now HCG from the pregnancy can stimulate constant progesterone production from the corpus luteum. So instead of having ups and downs of progesterone the entire time, which happens in the luteal phase, the moment you get pregnant, 
Ooh, now you have a nice increase in progesterone from the pregnancy. And so that's great. And that's where some of those pregnancy symptoms occur. So what are the pregnancy symptoms? They typically occur from those high progesterone levels. So you can have implantation, cramps and bleeding, and then high progesterone, you can have breast engorgement or tenderness. You can have sensitivity to smell, nausea. You can start to have GI distress. You can start to feel like your bowel movements are different or a little more bloated or gassy. And you can have fatigue, which is a huge one, just really feeling very tired. And that's because suddenly your body knows you're pregnant. It senses that HCG. All that progesterone is increasing to support that pregnancy and your body is shifting gears. So this is a huge change for your body. Now, once that HCG is secreted from the embryo, it is released into the bloodstream. And into the bloodstream, what is going to happen is your HCG has to get metabolized and then you pee it out in order to take a home urine test. That's why blood tests are a little more sensitive because you don't have to have it metabolized and get into the urine. We can detect at lower levels in the blood. The blood is the end all be all. So if you're doing fertility treatments, you know that we're gonna bring you in for a blood test to get a definitive answer. But if you're trying on your own or you just wanna know if your fertility treatments work, you may wanna take a home pregnancy test. And so the big answer is at what levels can this detect? The first thing I wanna say is that a positive home pregnancy test, a faint line is a positive. This is one of the top questions I get asked. Does the line have to be dark? Unlike an ovulation test, which is made differently, if you're checking an ovulation test, you want the line as dark or darker to indicate your LH surge. But that's because the body naturally has LH floating around and you really need to get to a peak level. For an HCG pregnancy test, your body has no HCG until you get pregnant. So even if you see the faintest line possible, it is a positive test. So the real question is, when can we get that positive test? Now, these brands of tests use different sensitivity levels. They are always going to detect more at those early response, first response, and they're going to cost more money. So if you walk into the drugstore and you see some of those tests that say early, lower levels detected, detect five or six days before your missed period, most of those tests are very accurate. However, they cost more money. And so you just wanna make sure you're using your resources well. If you take a normal pregnancy test, most non-early response tests are going to have a threshold cutoff somewhere around 50 to 100 HCG. And that's around what it should be by the time you miss your period. So if you're waiting till that missed period moment, you could just take a regular pregnancy test and it would cut it. If you are wanting to detect earlier, you're going to want a first response or an early response test. So Clear Blue has an early detection test and there's first response and those are both the ones with the lowest sensitivity levels. First response actually detects at lower levels in most studies, somewhere between six to 10 milli IUs per milliliter of HCG. So first response in studies detects at a lower level. Now your Clear Blue test detects at a little bit higher level in studies, typically around 20 to 30 MIUs per milliliter. Still very early. Now, most other pregnancy tests that are on the market are going to detect at levels that are going to be higher. Now, how do you take a pregnancy test? I know that sounds silly, but it's an important question. When you're taking a pregnancy test, what you're wanting to do is get a mid urine stream. So these tests actually have a little absorbent tip on them right here, where what you're going to do is start peeing. You're going to just pee on this. You wanna get it filled up and then the urine will move up through the sample. How it's made is that there's a line for a control and then there's a line for positive if HCG is detected. So every test is a little different, whether it's like two lines or a cross, like a plus or what they wanna do, but there should be a key on any test indicating what is positive. So on this clear blue, you can see that pregnant is a positive and that not pregnant is going to be a just straight line. So one line for not, two lines for positive. Now you're going to pee on the test, leave it on the counter for the set amount of time, and then you're going to go back and look at it. If you get a positive and it's a faint line and you want to follow it every day, you can do that. You're gonna use more tests, but I know we like to do this sometimes, and you can see the line darkening. And that's because in normal pregnancies, once you're pregnant, the HCG should double approximately every two days. So if you get that positive line, then you'll see it double a couple days. Now, how early can you take a test? I talked about the sensitivities of the HCGs, but when are you going to detect those? 
If we think back to when the embryo is implanting, it's arriving in the uterus around day five or six, and then it's going to start to make this connection. So the absolute earliest is going to be six days after ovulation, and I usually tell patients don't test until eight days after ovulation because the moment it starts implanting, there's not going to be enough HCG to register even with a low-level test. So you really want to give it at least a couple days to get that HCG production going so you can detect it. So I usually say eight days after ovulation at the soonest. So just save yourself money and don't test before then. And then if you test and you get a positive, you can test later and see if that line is darkening to confirm what you're finding. Now, warning if you've done fertility treatments. When should you test if you've done fertility treatments? If you used a trigger shot, so this could be with ovulation induction medications like Clomid or Letrozole, gonadotropins like FSH or LH, or in an IVF cycle with a fresh trigger, or in an embryo transfer cycle where you did a natural or a modified natural and you triggered the body, HCG is the trigger shot. The exact same HCG that we're detecting on these tests. So you would get a positive if the trigger is still in your body. It usually takes about 10 days to get the trigger out of your system. So if you triggered 10 days, then you could take a test in order to get a positive result. The other option is to do something what people call testing out your trigger. And that means that you're going to take a test and you're gonna watch the line get lighter, 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 lighter and gone. And then you're gonna watch it come back if you're pregnant or stay negative if you're not. If you do that, I would use less expensive tests because you're going to use a lot of them. And sometimes early testing can bring about a lot of anxiety. So just word to the wise, think about what's best for you. A lot of patients, I say, we're gonna bring you in for blood. That's the definitive answer. Don't stress yourself out ahead of time. I know myself and a lot of patients though, we just wanna know the answer. So if you wanna know the answer, know the difference in the test, a regular test or first response. So if you're taking a regular test before your missed period, it might be negative. That doesn't mean you're not pregnant. Just your HCG may not be high enough to detect on that test. If you're taking an early response or a first response test, if you're taking it before day you know, eight post ovulation, I'm not surprised that you're not getting a positive yet. You have to take it at day eight or later. And word to the wise about the trigger shot, 10 days to get out of your body. Now, last thing, false negative tests. When can you take a test and it shows negative and you're really not? Number one is going to be you're just testing too early. So you're positive, but the test sensitivity is too low for how early you are. The second could be that your urine is too dilute. So your urine is too dilute. It's not a concentrated enough sample. And that's why you'll see a lot of these tests, they use the first morning urine because that's going to be your least dilute urine. Unlike ovulation tests where I tell you to take them in the middle of the day because of when the hormone is secreted, HCG is secreted constantly, so you can use that first morning urine and know you're getting a nice concentrated sample. Most of the time, you're not gonna get a false positive test. You can have a chemical pregnancy, which means you get a positive on the test and then it turns negative later, and that's where pregnancy tried to implant, but then typically something was wrong or going wrong in development, and it stopped implanting, and that's called a chemical or a biochemical pregnancy. You got a positive test, but you lost the pregnancy. It's a very early stage miscarriage. And a lot of these are due to just embryo abnormalities. And that's what your body is supposed to do because you can't be pregnant many, many times. So the body's really making sure the embryo has the competency to become a baby. The other thing that can cause a false positive is if you're menopausal, your body actually can secrete low levels of HCG from the pituitary. It's a very interesting thing. But if you're not having a period and you're in menopause, or you haven't had a period for a very long time and you're menopausal age and you get a positive test, you may wanna go see your doctor because that may not actually be the case. And the last thing that can cause a false negative is something very rare called hook effect. It's when you're so pregnant that it overwhelms the test and nothing can bind. This happens when somebody is very, very far pregnant along and they have very high levels and they end up getting a negative test. So remember, your doctor can always draw a blood test and that's going to be the most sensitive version. I hope this video helped answer some of your questions about early pregnancy testing. If you have more questions about the two week wait and implantation, I do have a video on implantation symptoms specifically and more details about what happens in this two week wait period. Again, thank you guys for being here so much. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram. If you're interested in learning more about your own natural fertility, check out the Enhance Your Natural Fertility course at nataliecrawfordmd.com. Thanks, friends.